Now we all play games for a variety of different reasons. We like to experience things that could never happen in real life, take control of characters we could never be in real life, and visit places that we could never visit. But have you ever wondered why you or some other people are attracted to horror games? Why would anyone want to purposefully induce fear or experience fear? I mean, I think we can all agree that there are certain kinds and types of fear we would never want to experience, like being scared of one's life or for the life of a loved one. But why are there other types of fear that we do? Well, today I'm going to be trying to answer that exact question and I will be specifically looking at three main points slash personality traits that generally lead to people being attracted to horror games or horror in any other form of media. Now obviously most of this is not set in stone, some of the information is backed up by psychological research that's been performed, others are backed up by simple personality traits and habits, however, considering psychology and in general defining personality is not a science that is set in stone, there is quite a solid chance that none of these may apply to you, so if there is any other reason that you yourself are attracted to horror that you would like to share, please leave it down in the comments and I would absolutely love to read it. Now with that out of the way, put on your Halloween masks, get ready for some spooking, and let's go. Now to start us off, let's talk personality traits, and more specifically, let's talk about the sensation-seeking personality. Now this one is defined by being entertained slash excited by new experiences that usually induce strong emotions at high intensity. This type of person is much more likely to seek out scary slash horror-based experiences in order to fill in that intense feeling that they're craving. Now, based on some research by Marvin Zuckerman, this personality trait simply requires a higher level of stimulation to reach its so-called optimal level of arousal. See, we all as humans have a certain level at which we are receiving stimuli and we are the most entertained. If someone were to take the famous example of watching paint dry and still be entertained by it, that would mean that that person has a very low level of emotional arousal. They do not require a high level of stimuli to be emotionally excited. Now, as theory would suggest, for the people with the sensation-seeking personality traits, this level is simply pushed higher, and when not met, that person will most likely find that experience bland, boring, or even unpleasant. Based on that, it is quite obvious to see why they would be attracted to horror and scary media in general, because the tense and often scary experience can simply generate more inputs and higher level of sensation. Now, there are some sources which tend to relate sensation seeking with the extroverted personality trait. However, this has not really been backed by any substantial research and it appears to be much more of an independent character trait that should be perhaps more associated with openness to experience. The more open you are to experiencing new things, maybe trying out new foods, visiting new locations, or trying new sports, the more likely you are to eventually leave that base level of emotional excitedness and slowly up it as you experience new and new things, always requiring you to push a little bit further to get that extra kick out of it. And talking about getting a kick, we come to the second reason why people might be so attracted to horror games or horror media in general. It is a potential emotional response, also known as the after horror euphoria. Now, according to Glenn Sparks, quoting, people become psychologically aroused due to the fear they experience during the media event, and when that media event ends, that arousal transfers to the experience of relief and intensifies it. People don't so much enjoy the experience of being afraid, rather, they enjoy the intense positive emotion that may directly follow. Now this one I think we can all somewhat relate to. If you've ever gotten scared by someone, someone jumped out at you in the middle of the night as a prank, or you've ever watched this scary piece of media, right after a jump scare you often get that rushing warm feeling of relief that you're actually fine, nothing is going to happen to you, and it's all fun and games and we can laugh about it in the future. This strongly suggests that for a certain percentage of people who enjoy the experience of horror, it's not so much about the experience while they're watching it and while they're afraid, but more about the relief at the end when they say, 
oof, we've made it through, everything's okay, and it was a great experience. Now this emotional response is, in a more short-term loop, often exploited and used by horror media creators by inducing that relieving feeling in moments right before or after jump scares. In these works, they often give their audience a false cue to relax, let their guard down, only then to be taken by surprise by another jump scare. It's this very interesting dynamic which keeps the viewing experience fresh, and especially when coupled with someone who has that sensation-seeking personality trait can provide a rather wide array of stimuli. And very closely linked to this point is potentially the final aspect that I want to talk about today, and that's emotional control. Now, we as humans tend to form a large portion of our self-image, and by extension self-worth, by how well we are able to perform in certain aspects compared to other individuals. Now, this can obviously be extended to the field of emotional self-regulation and the ability to keep it cool and maintain a collected outlook in stressful situations. Whether this is done to impress others or improve one's own personal image is irrelevant. However, there is evidence that shows that a certain amount of people may be more inclined to experience horror slash stressful forms of media as their ability to make it through, rather unaffected, improves their personal perceptions of themselves. I mean, this would make sense because we, in general, like the feeling of being in control. In fact, several experiences have shown that people felt less scared while watching a horror movie if they were able to hold the remote control even if they weren't doing any actual changes to what's being played. This not only suggests that the more effective forms of scary experiences are the one where control is taken away from the audience, and also that control as perceived by us can only be on a mental level that already helps us get through whatever we are experiencing. Now just to end this off, if you're interested whether being attracted to horror changes with age or sex, the answer to the first part is yes, partially, as after a certain age, which strongly varies from person to person, but it's usually in the late stages of adulthood, around 55 years old plus, there is a rather strong adrenaline fall-off, causing that category of people a much weaker experience as far as horror goes, and as far as the split between male and female consumers, it highly depends on the form of media as well as the age group, but for all trims and purposes, it's basically split right down the middle. Anyways guys, that is all I wanted to say in this video. I hope you found it at least a little bit interesting and informative and that you maybe walk away having learned something new. As previously mentioned, if none of these apply to you and you can still verbalize a good reason why you yourself or your friend perhaps feels attracted to the horror genre as a whole, please make sure to leave it down in the comments below, I would very much like to read it. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider leaving a like or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. I want to wish you all a beautiful rest of today, and I'm going to see you in whatever next spooky video I make. Bye bye.